I'm Kamini Sani, the director of MAP, and it's a pleasure to be in conversation with Ima Ramos, who joins us from the British Museum. Through this dialogue, we bring together two works in different periods, different mediums, and different styles. But they do have one thing in common, music. So let's look at how each artist uses music to tell a story. I'm delighted to be introducing you to an exquisite Indian painting which we acquired towards the end of 2019 with the support of Art Fund and the National Heritage Memorial Fund. It's a courtly painting by Nainsuk of Guler, the most acclaimed artist of the Pahari or hill style of painting, a style which developed in the Punjab hills of northwest India. Nainsuk's name translates as Delight of the Eyes. He's one of India's greatest courtly artists, and this outstanding painting showcases his gift for dynamic composition and sensitive observation. On the other side, we are looking at a painting from the 1980s by Tayab Mehta, one of India's finest modernists. Mehta's traumatic memories of the partition are a recurring motive in his paintings, in particular the falling figure and the trust bull. In this painting, we see the lone figure of a drummer beating on the drum in what appears to be a frenzy of despair. Nainsuk's paintings, in contrast, show a joyous group of trumpeteers perhaps making an announcement, or just part of a larger gathering of musicians. We believe it was painted between 1735 and 1740. We see seven musicians playing Pahari horns with long pipes known as turhi, their cheeks puffed out with the effort. It's a simple subject which is tightly composed with an energy and sense of abandon pulsing through it. The naturalistic observation of details like the puffed cheeks shows the influence of Mughal painting. Nainsuk may have also been drawing on prints of Italian Renaissance paintings by Mantegna and Fray Angelico, which portray angels blowing trumpets. The setting and the context is deliberately ambiguous and almost abstract. It could have sacred or secular overtones. It might represent a courtly performance for a ruler or else musicians celebrating the birth of a Hindu god. Mehta's drama too is part of a festive celebration. In the 1980s, mother goddesses, buffalo demons and Santal drummers begin to appear on his canvases. It was there that he painted his landmark Shanti Niketan triptych, a three-panel representation of life and death, of mutilation, but also healing. Mehta was deeply influenced by the Charak festival celebrations of the Santals, a tribal community. Drummers are an essential part of the Charak rituals. He returned to Mumbai with significant changes to his work. The figure of the drummer now begins to recur more frequently in Mehta's paintings, like this one from the MAP collection, painted in 1988. He used the technique of multiple images to convey motion. In this case, the repeated image of the hand conveys the rhythm of the drummer. It was painted at the height of Nainsuk's career while he was working for the ruler of Jasrota, Raja Balvant Singh, who he seems to have been unusually close to. He painted him in a variety of intimate contexts, from trimming his beard to sitting by the fireplace. The jewel-like colour, intricate detail and poetic mood of this painting suggest it would have been seen up close and studied at leisure, enjoyed privately or among guests. Mehta's style and pictorial language was influenced by both European modernism, as we see here in his use of cubist forms, but also through Indian miniature traditions. As in the case of Nainsuk's musicians, we do not get a sense of the space the drama is depicted in. Mehta's distorted figures are characterized by intensity and rawness. He had once witnessed a man being killed during the partition of the country, and that memory seeps into his work repeatedly. The drummer's bisected body expresses metaphorically the division of the land, but also the realization of the self, contemplating the individual and the collective, the secular and the religious. The flat planes of color and the diagonal divisions are both devices that were used by Indian miniaturists. Mehta's compositions often feature the diagonal line, 
a symbolic interpretation of partition. The introduction of the diagonal in his practice took place just after a residency in New York in 1968. He was already exploring the pictorial space, but after he encountered colour field paintings, particularly Barnett Newman's so-called zip paintings, he began to explore the tension between the colour field and figuration. All elements that are very distinct in this variation of the drama. This painting had been in a private collection since being purchased by the prominent 20th century British artist Winifred Nicholson during a tour of India with her father, who was Under Secretary of State for India between 1914 and 1915. Nicholson's experiences in India and her encounter with South Asian art informed her own aesthetic exploration of light and colour. After Nicholson's death, the painting remains with her family and this is now the first time it has entered a public collection. We have three other masterful paintings by Nainsuk in the collection which capture scenes of life at court, including women celebrating Diwali, the Festival of Lights, and a portrait of Balvant Singh being entertained by musicians. Together, these paintings can be seen and studied alongside the museum's extensive South Asia collections, allowing for further understanding of the full scope of the Pahari painting tradition. So two masterpieces from different times and distinct spaces that use music to tell us their own stories of celebration and mourning, joy and despair, solitude and community.